Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Bally at Brand coming to you from the stand up desk, a new studio here in my room. Uh, in this video, I want to be talking about something that happened yesterday, some of the uh, nomics drama, and just some of the market cap ranking things that are going on with Hex and with Nomic specifically. And I'll also mention that I'm going to start using coinpaprika.com and why. So let's get into this right quick here. So uh, as we all know, Hex used to be the top third market cap and most recently got flipped by Binance, you know, BNB. Uh, but then the next day or maybe hours later, someone was on a stream and they're saying, look at Nomics, look at Nomics. And so I look at Nomics and I say, oh, where's Hex, you know? And so now what uh, what Clay Collins has done with, with Hex is the actual circulating supply, this 137 billion, uh, they've lowered it to be removing some of the origin address, sister wallets, and some of the sub accounts. But the thing that I wanna talk about is, I mean, first off market cap itself, we talk about is a vanity metric, right? And I don't see any reason to get super mad and super irritated about this. That's not going to bring much resolution. But the thing that I will say that is kind of uh, disheartening when it comes to crypto, right? We all know that you should always be verifying and never trusting. And just like with coin market cap, right? They they uh, market themselves as honest, transparent data. Same thing with nomics, which is now not true. But if you look at the circulating supply, would say even Bitcoin, right? It's circulating supply is 18,869,593. Well, the thing that most people are not uh, figuring out I guess my ball is back there. The thing that most people aren't even considering is that the circulating supply that Nomics is showing with Bitcoin includes Satoshi's million coins. And so if Clay was going to use the argument, and he has, that, hey, he just wants to be transparent. He just wants to have the market cap be the actual market cap and the circulating supply be the actual circulating supply. Well, then it kind of defeats the whole purpose um, of this metric in general. And it does seem like a targeted attack specifically because if you're going, to, you know, if he's actually being honest, which he's not, but he's claiming to be, he's claiming that, oh, you know, the origin address and the circulating supply, I just want to be accurate. Well, then if you actually believed that, that's just what he's telling us. What's the actual actuality? Well, the actuality is he had only adjusted hex and he hasn't adjusted anything else. So you kind of have this double standard where, you know, everything just happened to Hex and it happens to be so convenient at a point in time where Hex was now becoming a threat, right? You've got Hex that was top three. Now it's becoming a threat for say Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's all I'm really going to mention there. Um, I will not be using Nomics anymore. I'm not going to badly talk about Clay. Um, that's not my goal in this, but my goal is, hey, here's what's happening. Here's why I don't use Nomics anymore. The only thing that I could find that's like a compromise, even though it's not what we've had before, that's fine. It still is what it is, is a coin paprika. So we started actually using this before Nomics even ever came out. But if we scroll down here, you can see that they've got Hex at the top eight market cap. And then when we click on the supply and scroll down a little bit more, so instead of the hundred and however many billion that uh, Nomics had, we've got 286 billion you know, 459 million, 495,821. So shout out to uh, Coin Paprika for at least having a little bit more uh, uh, honesty than, uh, you know, people like Nomics and, and people like Clay that just seem to kind of be going down a, a different path, which is fine. It's all uh, it's all the, the, the trick of the trade. But just like with, say, uh, Coin Market Cap, I don't think it's it's honest for Clay or uh, honest for that kind of behavior to now pretend like you're doing people a good favor in that, oh, you know, I want to help out with Pulse Chain. And so since I'm going to help out with Pulse Chain, I'm going to make sure that the hex data is, is honest. And it's like, what kind of cop out excuse is that, man? Like, you know, so what it comes down to is certain people buckle under pressure, right? You've got something that's going like this and or like the game of chicken. You know, but you've got the meek elbows and you've got something that, that eventually has to give, you know, once you're head to head. 
and we see a lot of people, you know, we saw all the gatekeeping with Hex. And now we're seeing it with Clay, with Nomics, where he's just given up. And uh, and now, you know, the centralization over, uh, uh, let's see, over here at the very top right, you can see like this big Cyclops thing. And you can see this ocean, which is, uh, you know, the Cyclops is Hex and the ocean and the ship in the ocean is like the centralized exchanges. Uh, people wouldn't be doing this. Clay wouldn't be doing this if people in, the, in Clay didn't consider Hex a threat or something that could subdue their whole model in the first place. So a lot of those companies, Coin Market Cap, you know, Nomics, they get paid from advertisements, which is fine. But it's showing you that people will always do what's best for them. And hexagons that have stayed truthful since day one, that have stayed uh, honest with their intentions since day one, good on them. I'm one of them. And I tell you what, it's hard to be in the face of adversity and still stand your ground and stand your opinion while the other option is just so much easier because now you're not being ridiculed. But the other option is also not long lasting in the long term for what's truth and what's right. So I just want to encourage hexagons to, uh, you know, maybe don't be using nomics, right? Uh, and I think that some of the reasons that Clay had given are just not maybe uh, not maybe truthful for, for what his actual intentions are. Like, just be honest, dude. Like, you kind of sold out or it's kind of for the money, you know? Or you've got other people, other exchanges, maybe other exchanges that are using that data that aren't wanting the honesty. And it's fine. It is what it is. This is going to be my only video on this because once again, I don't think we should be focusing, you know, it's, it's fine to do one video and to kind of focus what's going on. I know Motley and Tenny's did a really good job about that, but then it's like, okay, Hey, we see what the problem is and now what's the solution. And so the solution has always been that hexagons have always routed around hex has always routed around. And I don't think it would be very hard for a new market cap website to come out that was actually accurate. You can go to etherscan.io. We can do it real quick, just since I'm still in this video here. So if we go to etherscan.io, and then we're gonna type in hex, whoops. Damn it, <laughs> one second, we're gonna type in hex right here. We're gonna click here, and this is the actual on-chain data itself, all right? So you can scroll down, it'll tell you how many holders there are, some of the information, but if you click on info, It'll tell you what the circulating supply is. And it's saying right here, 173 billion. But just the things to consider is that, hey, the way that this works is by actually circulating. And we saw that on November 19th of 2020, we saw that the big payday, that there was over 99% uh, of the stakers that had staked. Well, what's that show you? That shows you that the origin address has circulated their coins. So I just think it's kind of interesting where sometimes the data itself doesn't match the reality that they're kind of painting. And I think it's important for hexagons to always have your head on a swivel. Once again, if someone is showing you their true colors, believe them, all right? So that's all I have for this video. I'm going to start using Coin Paprika. Once again, you can show people etherscan.io too, and you can show them that, hey, you know, here's the actual on-chain data itself. You can see where coins have circulated. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, it's rules for thee, not for me. So for, for Bitcoin or Ethereum, those same things could happen where they could remove that centralized ownership or supply that might have not circulated very much. But then, you know, it's different. It's different for the hexagon. So this is that David versus Goliath journey. And once again, replacing the financial system, replacing the products at the banks, replacing all these other cryptocurrencies that feed off of you and feed off of your misery, replacing them doesn't come without a fight. And so hexagons are constantly battling, but just like Richard wins a lot of the debates, not even a lot, but just like he wins all of the debates and why he sounds so smart and, and truthful in them is because he has truth on his side just like our, you know, hexagons and our hex product is uh, is on the side of truth too. So that's all I have for this video. Finally, under a 10 minute video, got the stand up desk going here and, uh, you know, really am happy about this new setup, but I'll see everyone on the next video.